everyone, Shani from Shani Sweet Creations here. So today I'm going to show you how I make my cake boxes. Often I find that standard cake boxes are not tall enough for my cakes. So I have come up with this method to create a very professional looking box that is fairly inexpensive and easy to make. So I'm going to show you how I do that. I use a white shipping box and I do a cellophane front. I also use pretty ribbons to match my business colors and I also tape a cake cutting guide on the side of the box. So I'm going to show you how I make these. Let's get started. Okay, the first thing you're going to want to do is hot glue the bottom flap of your box shut. The reason why I hot glue is so that you're not seeing the packing tape on the outside of the box. It just looks nicer that way. So I also like to reinforce the, jo the joining seam that's inside the box. Um, just for safety wise, um, in case the glue fails or something like that, you never know. It just, it makes me feel better to have that taped and doubly secured. So the next thing we're going to do is cut the window for the box. The way I determine where I want to do that is by figuring out where the writing is that's on the bottom of the box. I'm going to cover up this with a uh, cutting guide. So this is going to be the side of the box that opens. So this will be the front of my box. This is where I will cut my window. To do that, I usually mark at least an inch and a half in from the edges of the box all the way around. On larger boxes I'll usually give two inches but for the smaller boxes like this an inch and a half is good. So you're just going to cut out your nice square and you want this to be as clean of a cut as you can get so use a very sharp um, either X-Acto knife or box knife to cut your window out. Take your time to make a nice clean cut. So for my smaller boxes, um, for my less expensive cakes, I don't mind that there is a cut edge of cardboard showing here, but there is a way, actually several ways, to make this look much cleaner and nicer if you are um, going to be using the box for a really expensive fancy cake. But for my smaller cakes, I don't mind that this is uh, a little bit of a, a rough edge here. So the next thing we're going to do is uh, put a piece of cellophane in the front. So what I do is use the piece of cardboard that I just cut out the window from. Go ahead and lay it on top of a piece of cellophane. And then you're going to just cut about an inch around that. Doesn't have to be exact. Just get a rough cut. And then this is a double stick adhesive roll. It makes it super easy to attach the cellophane on the inside of the box right up against the cut. And the reason why you want that is so that the cellophane doesn't fall out. So just go ahead and run that double stick tape right along the edge on the inside of your window. you guys can see what I'm doing here. Right up against the edge of that cut. And 
Okay. So then go ahead and place your cellophane right there on the inside and press it down onto the tape. You can pull it back up a little bit if you've got a wrinkle. Just try and get it on there as straight as you can. Have a nice tight window. There we go. So the next thing we're gonna do is make the ties on the side. The reason why I decided to do ties on the side instead of taping the box shut is it makes it so you can get in and out of it several times easily and it also looks really pretty. So what you're gonna do, go ahead and close up your box and then you're gonna mark where you want your ties to be. I usually do about an inch to two inches down from the front and about maybe three quarters of an inch on the inside. I will do two ties on the box. So then take a hole punch and punch out those holes. Then with your box shut, poke a pencil through those holes and make a little mark on your inside flap. Okay, so there's our marks. And you're just going to take your X-Acto knife and a little slit going vertical so that your ribbon can hook through right there. You've cut your holes for your ribbons to poke through. Make them about as wide as your ribbon. And then you're going to insert the ribbon from the back side of that flap. It's easy if you take a thin flat ruler or some sort of tool like that and wrap your ribbon around it. And then you're gonna, from the back side of that flap, you're just gonna poke the ribbon through on one side. And then on the other side, and pull them all the way through. Do the same thing to the top flap. And you're going to put a little knot right in the very end of your ribbon. By the way, I am using um, a grosgrain ribbon, which I prefer. It's just a little more sturdy. It's it's the look that I like. Um, satin ribbon would work just fine as well, or maybe a piece of burlap ribbon, whatever ribbon you want. But I do prefer the grosgrain ribbon. I feel like it is um, it is a little bit more sturdy. Okay, so go ahead and knot the ends. Pull them tight. You can trim a little if you have some, some excess ribbon. Okay, so now what we're going to do is put the handles on. So the handles come out from the front of the box and go to the back of the box. And I connect them in the center on the inside just to make it extra, extra sturdy. So go ahead and mark where you want your ribbons to come out. I usually like to come out right from the corner of the window, about halfway between the window and the top of the box. Again on the other side. Go ahead and make your slit with your Zacto knife. We're 
cutting through two layers of cardboard right here because this is where the, jo the join is on the box. For the handles, I usually use about 30 inches of ribbon and do the same method as when you poke the ribbon through on the other thing, on the flaps. Just push it through like that. Make sure it's lined up the way you're going to want it. Not, no twists in the ribbon. Push that through. And then you're going to go ahead and pull the ribbon all the way in for now. And knot the ends twice. Just extra precautions there. So I usually knot it once, right at the very end. Pull it tight, and then I open it up and pull it as tight as I can get it so I know that knot is not slipping. And then I make another knot. So you're doubly safe. This is not gonna open up and fall off and drop your box on the ground. Pull it back through. You got one handle. Repeat on the back side. Making sure my ribbon is not twisted. Pushing it through. Bringing it inside. And knotting the ends. some beautiful little handles. Okay, so the last thing I do <clears throat> is put some business cards on the top of the box. And what I like to do is take a cookie, cellophane cookie bag, and put three or four cards in the cookie bag. bag so it's just maybe a quarter of an inch above the cards and use my double stick tape on the back of it oops that didn't work tape doesn't want to work today okay then I tape that to the top of the box and I always let my customers know that there are extra cards in the top so that they can hand them to their friends when their friends ask, oh, what a gorgeous cake, where did you get it? Your best advertisement is word of mouth. If they have a card that they can hand to their friends and their family, that is the best advertising you can get. Um, okay, so then to close the box, going to poke your knot right through that little hole. I do one side at a time. So my my ribbons are a little short in this. I would I would go a little bit longer. So maybe cut your cut your uh, tie ribbons to about 14 inches. 
And there you go. That is how I make a fairly quick and inexpensive cake box. These are cheap enough that they can go with your customers. You don't have to ask for them back. I think the boxes, if you order them on Amazon in packs of 25, they range maybe from 75 to 85 cents, depending on the size of box you do. Um, the ribbon's gonna cost you maybe another $2. Cellophane, of course, a couple cents maybe. Um, so all in all, this, this box probably costs less than $1.50. And it's very um, professional looking. It's very sturdy and it's tall enough to hold your cake. Yay! Okay, so just a few alternatives that you can do um, when you're doing a larger cake box that's going to hold a taller and heavier cake. I like to do hand holds instead of the ribbon, that I just feel like it's a safer method for carrying a heavier cake. Though I still recommend my clients carry the cake from the bottom and support the weight of the cake from the bottom. When you want to do a super clean cake box for a really fancy cake, you can disguise the cut edges of the window by cutting it a little bit smaller and then folding the flaps in and taping them on the inside. So you have a nice folded flap and a clean edge for your window. When you, um, when you just cut it straight, you get a little bit of a cardboard edge. I don't know if you can see that, but this is, this is a way to make a really clean, smooth edge. The other thing that you can do is tape a piece of ribbon around the outside edge, and that will disguise that spot as well. I don't mind it, and especially for my less expensive cakes, it's gonna be quicker and easier to just do a nice cut like this. But if you really wanna go fancy and make a super clean box, there are those alternatives. Okay, so that's it for today. I hope that's helpful for some of you and um, hopefully you guys get to make some beautiful boxes. Thank you for joining me. You can follow me on my Facebook page at Shaney Sweet Creations, and please subscribe to my YouTube channel. Thanks for joining me. I will be doing some more tips and tricks, and I will see you another time. Have a sweet day.